Since getting a spinal cord injury and becoming a quadriplegic, I am cold most of the time and usually wear a sweatshirt when the temperature is under 70 degrees Fahrenheit. In the summer, I like being in the direct sunlight and soaking up the sun. However, I have to be smart in extreme hot and cold temperatures. This is because a spinal cord injury affects the body's ability to regulate temperature. In this video, I tell you about the causes, preventions, symptoms, and treatments of issues with the body temperature regulation with a spinal cord injury. Let me know in the comments your experience with regulating your body temperature with a spinal cord injury. If you are new to the channel, my name is Mason Ellis. I'm a C5 through C7 quadriplegic. I make videos to help you live life just like you would have able-bodied. If you enjoy this video, give it a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on future videos. Your body temperature can change based on the temperature in the air. When you're in a cold environment, your body temperature decreases, and when you're in a hot environment, your body temperature increases. Normally, the body sends a signal through the spinal cord to the brain saying the body is hot or cold. The brain responds by sending a signal to the body telling the body to cool down by sweating, to prevent overheating, or to warm up by causing the blood vessels to constrict and the body to shiver. A spinal cord injury prevents your body and brain from properly sending or receiving these signals, causing the body to experience hyperthermia, which is too hot, or hypothermia, which is too cold. The normal responses to hot and cold, such as sweating or shivering, can still occur, but only above your spinal cord injury. Therefore, these responses are not as effective since the whole body doesn't react to them. However, this varies between an incomplete spinal cord injury and a complete spinal cord injury. It takes me a long time to get warmed up or to get cooled down. You might not experience feeling hot or cold like normal, but your body still senses and responds to it. It is important to be aware that your body can be more sensitive to changes in temperature and pay attention to other signals your body sends you besides sensation. Here's what causes issues with temperature regulation. A spinal cord injury at vertebrae T6, which is thoracic and vertebrae 6 or higher, significantly impacts body temperature regulation because this is where the neural pathways are located that maintain the body's internal temperature. This means people who have a spinal cord injury at T6 or above may experience difficulty adjusting their body temperature to environmental changes due to disrupted sympathetic control. The sympathetic nervous system is a part of the atomic nervous system that controls the body's fight or flight response. Some of the sympathetic nervous system fight or flight responses that are affected related to body temperature regulation are sweating, blood flow distribution, goosebumps, and shivering. Sweating is when the sweat glands release sweat onto the skin, which then evaporates and cools the body down. Blood flow distribution allows the body to control how much heat is transferred to the skin surface through the narrowing and widening of blood vessels in your skin. When the body is hot, blood vessels near the skin become larger to increase blood flow and increase heat loss. When the body is cold, blood vessels near the skin become smaller to reduce blood flow to the skin to minimize heat loss and direct blood flow toward the core organs. Goosebumps help regulate body temperature when it's cold by contracting muscles attached to their follicles which generates heat. Shivering helps regulate body temperature when it's cold by your body sending nerve impulses to the skeletal muscles, causing them to rapidly contract and relax, which generates heat. The higher the level of spinal cord injury is above vertebrae T6, the more noticeable temperature regulation issues can be. Here's how to prevent issues with temperature regulation. For both hot and cold temperatures, you can avoid extreme temperatures and don't stay in those extreme temperatures for too long. In hot weather, you can wear light colored clothes, avoid direct sunlight, and drink plenty of fluids. For cold weather, you can wear multiple layers of warm clothes. And for me, these Carhartt sweatshirts are a must have, and I have several of them and I wear them all the time. I would be miserable without them because whenever I get cold, my neck starts to hurt pretty badly. I'm not sure what causes the pain in my neck when I'm cold, but I'm thinking it might be 
the muscles tensing up um, because I'm cold and these Carhartt sweatshirts are a must have for me. Another thing you can do in cold weather is to make sure your entire body is covered including areas you can't feel especially your hands and feet to avoid frostbite. For me I have several of these Carhartt toboggans that I wear whenever it's cold outside and I also have this Carhartt neck gaiter that I wear whenever it's really cold outside or windy uh, especially if I'm hunting I will put this on on my neck and it helps a lot. If you're interested in getting this toboggan or neck gaiter there will be a link in the description of this video. Here are symptoms of issues with temperature regulation. For hot weather when body temperature increases you might get a headache, feel dizzy or nauseated, your face and neck become red and for me I feel extremely drained like I have no energy. For cold weather when body temperature decreases you might feel chilled, uh, you might get the shivers, goosebumps, or your teeth may chatter. Here are treatments for issues with temperature regulation. When your body temperature is high get out of the heat, get to an air conditioned area or in front of a fan, take off layers of clothing, wipe off with cool water and a wash rag, and drink something cold. When your body temperature is low you can cover up with blankets, add more layers of clothing, get in a heated area or in front of a heater, and I have this portable heater right here. If you're interested in it, it will be linked in the description of this video. And you can also drink or eat something hot. So hopefully this video gave you an idea of body temperature regulation with a spinal cord injury. Don't forget to let me know in the comments your experience with regulating your body temperature with a spinal cord injury. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on future videos. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you watch another one of my videos.